Fish biologists recently searched for missing fish radio tags around Pelican nesting islands on Canyon Ferry Reservoir. We thought we'd go and check it out and see how many pit tags we'd find. Ended up finding a lot more than really what we were expecting. Not only did biologists find missing fish radio tags from their Missouri and Smith River study areas, they also found other fish tags from the Big Hole and Yellowstone Rivers. So these birds are traveling great distance you know, to, to feed. The white pelican has rebounded from historic population lows 50 years ago. But fish and wildlife managers are beginning to wonder what impacts those rising pelican numbers could have. It's a conservation success, but people have gotten used to a lower population. So now that the population is back to where it may have been historically, it's a different style of management than we've seen over the last 50 years. Last year, Utah's Department of Wildlife Resources began looking at pelican movements in regards to impacts on fisheries and concerns with airplane collisions. And so far, the feeding patterns of pelicans have surprised them. And we were expecting to see them go 30, 50 miles, maybe up to 80, but we've seen birds traveling well over 100 miles just to go forage. We've seen birds go halfway across the state and back in a couple of days to a week. You know, we've seen birds go halfway across the country from northern Utah all the way to northern California and do that four times during the summer. As fish and wildlife managers learn more about pelicans, they will have to find a balance between the pelican and their potential impacts. I'd like to see the birds continue to thrive and continue to do well. But if they really are having impacts that are, that are causing problems elsewhere, then yeah, those need to be addressed. I'm Winston Greeley, out among Montana's fish, wildlife, and parks.